points of collection. Oh, so the letter itself is at the side, so it's going to hold. Oh, so it's just slowly building the picture. Yeah. Yeah, it's making a bunch of concentric rings, like uh, a You can adjust it. I've got a set now for, I think, uh, five degrees. Huh. If, if you set it for like one degree increment, and then you can set it for not so much the globe, but in a way. Yeah, we don't much. screw around, you know. And, but it takes uh, like over an hour for high res scan. I'm just doing a quick scan just to set the front orientation. So we're between 22 and what is it, 30 feet now? About 4 to 22. Right, so. About halfway there? Yeah, okay, about halfway. Hi hey Mary, how's it going? Hi. What's going on? We're calibrating his uh, LiDAR unit. Oh. In the garage here. Yeah, they temporarily stepped out for a while. City for the future. Um, quick brief history. The land trust was created in 2007. We added in three gardens, Lafayette Square, Soulard, and Dogtown, and then the land trust basically sat for 10 years. This year we added in two gardens at the beginning of the year, the National Institute's Global Farm, Joel's here for that farm, in Botanical Heights, and then it kind of got much more attention with the issues around the English Cave Garden, and then for us, we have now have under contract 14 gardens in the city of St. Louis. If you look at our map over here, everything, the red dot is on that list. And if all goes well, legally and with the title company, we should be closing at the beginning of November. So it's kind of a fun process. Um, we do have a sheet over there kind of listing out all the gardens that we are bringing in to the land trust this year. And we do have more on the way. I'm getting more emails too of other interests from gardens both in St. Louis City and also now in St. Louis County part of this protection of the land trust. I do want to thank one person specifically today with the funding, because this year we got our first funding for our land trust from the Meissen Foundation, with Jenny Holzer of Commerce and Kemper Foundation. So they made the connection for us, and they're the ones that are actually helping us really fund a few of these gardens that can't raise all the funds to buy them. And Levy's one of those gardens that is here today too. So if I could quickly get, everybody's going to be going into the land trust or is in the land trust, raise their hand if they're one of the gardeners. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're out here today and join this time. And as we go forward to one of the fun things that we saw in the last LRA um, board meeting, in fact, the guards were talking to each other during the meeting, sharing tips and ideas. So we want to see that fostered and bring those guards together more and make them more of a special group going forward. I also want to thank um, LRA, Laura Costello is here, Austin Albert. I might have been a pest to them quite a bit over the past few months, but we got to where we are today, which is fun. And also the um, LRA board, too. Mark Levison actually came out to one of our gardens to get a tour of the garden. 
and to really see what's going on and get a real flavor of what a community garden can do in the neighborhood. Um, my land trust board, Missy McCoy is here from the land trust board too, and then Matt Hoffman. Thank you, Missy. And then um, last thing I really want to say is um, I thank Benton Park Cafe and also um, Whisk for bringing out some treats today to kind of celebrate this neighborhood event. And also Greenscape too, a few, a few gifts for our land trust gardens. It's a fun time and we do expect to see the land trust explore new avenues. We were learning more and more about what a land trust can do, what it can't do. And there's opportunities we think with the land trust beyond even community gardens and urban farms of roles that it can take in St. Louis would be an asset for the community. So we're definitely going to explore those going forward. So right now I want to pass it off to Mayor Person. Good morning. Um, thank you all for having me here this morning. So I have to ask, who organized the postcard writing? Is, is that person here? Yeah, she's Jessica. <laughs> Very good, Jessica. <laughs> uh, I got, I don't know how many, at one point I was keeping track of the number of postcards I got about the love for uh, this community garden. And uh, so when I started receiving the postcards, um, I was like, well, where is this place? And uh, I look it up on the map. I get in the car one Saturday, and I'm driving, trying to kind of figure it out, you know, and drove down here. Maybe some of you saw me. I parked my car and walked around, and I had never been to this little hidden gem before. So I, I immediately understood why you all cared so much about this spot. Uh, it is uh, really special as a spot, but of course also as a garden. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad that this worked out to where uh, this will forever be a community garden. Um, next year maybe more tomatoes, more, uh, <laughs> more vegetables, I don't know. Uh, but th this I think demonstrates the power of neighbors coming together and uh, the ability of folks who really care about their neighborhood or something in their neighborhood who probably took this for granted for many, many years uh, to come together to really work to, to preserve something great for the neighborhood. So thanks to all of you who care so much about gardening and who care so much about green space. I mean, it's both, I think. And we know that in the city of St. Louis, we have 109 parks. And so we have, most of us live of, within walking distance of a park. But this is, I know, not a park, but still a gem of a green space, which uh, provides respite and provides this connection to uh, the land and connection to, um, to growing things that uh, often we don't find in, uh, in many city neighborhoods. So thanks to all of you for uh, your work on this and for caring so much about green space. Uh, because certainly it makes our, our city a much better place to, uh, to live and to enjoy. So thanks for having me here this morning. Congratulations to all of you who live around this green space or the many other gardens that, were, that you just raised your hands that you're near a community garden too. So thank you and thanks to Gateway Greening for, uh, for your work on this. Alden Gunther, this garden is in your ward. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, again, Dan Gunther, Ninth Ward Alderman. Uh, well before getting into politics, I was a gardener right here, uh, and still am. Uh, I'm one of a handful of members that uh, in this community came together about 13 years ago uh, and started uh, putting our hands in the soil in this plot of land. So uh, over the last year, uh, when we were faced with the possibility of losing this uh, little gem here in the neighborhood uh, to a new single family house, um, it was at uh, the LRA meeting, and once again, I, I do want to thank Laura, uh, LRA, uh, for putting up with us uh, in the many days that I called and, and argued over the benefits of community gardens. Um, so prior to, uh, again, prior to running for politics, uh, working in the uh, Office of Sustainability for the City of St. Louis, uh, and the City of St. Louis has a really wonderful sustainability plan, um, and if anyone knows about it, uh, it talks about triple bottom line sustainability. 
which uh, says that there are three things that should go into every decision that the, the city government makes. Uh, so we should be looking at um, economical, uh, environmental, and social benefits of every development in the city. And so when I had to go to the LRA hearing to, uh, to argue for why I believe that this piece of land should be saved and why we did not need another house here, uh, not only were we talking about the economical benefits of a garden, uh, there's a lot of research that shows that uh, houses that are within a block of a community garden space, that the values go up 30%. Uh, look around here, you see a lot of beautiful houses, and, uh, and this really is a, a, um, a space where uh, we can all look at with pride and say, yeah, this is our little garden, our little kind of hidden gem in our, in our alley here. Um, but then we also looked at the environmental benefits of the garden. Um, I believe that one of our members has a, uh, some uh, honey from this garden that they are going to be sharing with the mayor later on. Um, then there's also the, uh, the social aspects of this garden. So, um, you know, besides growing the tomatoes and the eggplants and, and the fruits, the pawpaw trees that we have, that we have pawpaw pudding with, uh, besides all those things, um, this garden really for the Neighborhood Association over the last 13 years has been a place where we've been able to gather. Uh, we had an annual gourd glow where we brought uh, hundreds of kids out, carved pumpkins, marched them through the neighborhood. Uh, we have socials here. We have uh, potato bakes in the fall. Um, so there's a lot of social aspects to this garden uh, that I thought was a lot more important than just putting another single house in a neighborhood. Uh, we've been very fortunate in this neighborhood. Uh, that we actually are just about out of vacant land. Um, we don't have a whole lot of empty space around this neighborhood to be able to build on. Uh, so when we uh, were faced with the potential of losing this garden, it really kind of rallied people uh, to come together and, and say, um, you know, and again, the shout out to Jessica, where she went in the back there, who came up with the uh, postcard mailing campaign uh, to where we had, I would say, hundreds of postcards hundreds of postcards uh, going to the mayor's office, all with great pictures of, of the kids carving pumpkins to, uh, to the historical aspects of this. So for a number of years, uh, the Neighborhood Association uh, had been talking with Matt and talking with Gateway Greening about putting this piece of property into the land trust. Um, we had all known about the land trust and uh, the, the benefits that not only the, the Soulard uh, and the Lafayette Park um, gardens had had, uh, both being uh, pieces of land on, on very uh, valuable real estate, um, but the, the fact that those two gardens were in the land trust, we were kind of just nudging with it for uh, uh, many years. Um, and then this past year, when there was actual contract put in on this piece of land, it really kind of got everyone uh, to kind of put a little extra uh, effort into the, the fact that we need to get this uh, land trust uh, kind of the conversation going again, the funding in place. And, um, and really get everything we needed. And so I'm, I'm proud to say that as a part of uh, what could have been a tragedy of losing this place, we ended up um, being a part of uh, the greater benefit. That's something that's gonna benefit the entire city of St. Louis uh, by putting these uh, pieces of property into the trust so that they will be ever, forever be communal green spaces for our neighbors. So again, thank you, Mayor Cruzen, for your leadership on this. I know you got a lot of phone calls and a lot of uh, postcards. Thank you to Gateway Greening for uh, being um, the one that actually uh, was able to help carry us through this process and be able to change the policy of LRA so that we can actually look at the benefit of a garden uh, when it comes to uh, what it does for neighborhoods. So thank you everyone for being here today and uh, we look forward to you looking around and enjoying our garden. So thank you. changes. And Austin Albert was the one we pestered the most. So I can invite Austin to come up and say a few words. I'm a little disappointed that I actually didn't get any of the postcards. <laughs> the walls of my cubicle are a little bare, so it could have been, could have been nice decoration, right? Um, so uh, I am the vacancy strategy project manager. I'm with SLDC. I'm housed at LRA. That's expanding capacity for LRA but also looking at policies, reforms, uh, looking at new programs to get vacant land out of the inventory. And so uh, I, I started in January, uh, and I would say uh, the garden policy and the, and the updates to that was my baptismal of fire in a way. Uh, 
So that was the first major project. So uh, I found it uh, uh, trying at times, but overall really beneficial because at the end of the day, uh, you know, government makes policies, they make rules, uh, but I've, I've really learned that good policy is a policy that's updated, it's adaptable, it's relevant with the times, and times have changed. Uh, and so uh, we have to acknowledge that these community gardens are community assets um, and that they should they should have a level of protection for them as well so uh, so I, I want to thank Matt uh, you've been really beneficial uh, and, and looking at some of the research uh, communicating the stories the experiences of the gardeners uh, not just here but all across the city uh, and uh, the leadership of Mayor Crusen uh, and her staff uh, my colleagues at SLDC Stella at LRA. Um, it's been uh, a really great experience, uh, and I look forward to working with you all in the future. Thank you.